Hello people, you are in this video to understand what happens in internship, isn't it? So basically, <clears throat> this is the latest guidelines given by National Medical Council, NMC, for uh, internship. So this is the draft regulation only. So if you see any problem, you can tell them, they will correct it probably. See, earlier, uh, what was there was um, a National, uh, sorry, Medical Council of India, MCI was there. The same uh, gate has the new board, uh, see this, this is in Delhi. So this is National Medical Commission now. When I was in Delhi, um, I had seen this um, M MCI. Now it is NMC. So anyways, uh, look at this. This is Undergraduate Medical Education Board. So they are they have given the draft regulations for the compulsory. It is compulsory rotating internship. Why is it called rotating, guys? Because you will be uh, rotating from one department to the other, isn't it? So who is an intern, guys? It's a medical graduate. <clears throat> who is undergoing training so you are a still a trainee you are a trainee you are under training okay so that's an intern so what is the intention of this internship so that you will prepare for independent unsupervised primary care so you should be able to achieve that in one year so most of uh, you will after mbbs final year right you will have a period of internship in the middle right and then you will go to your rural service which will be again uh, given to you by the government right so this internship should prepare you for independent practice you, for you to a, be able to handle uh, situations in your rural service isn't it you should be completing this one year of internship within two years of passing your final year mbbs guys okay otherwise what will happen you will have to check that because there are a lot of people who do internship late in life too so the eligibility for doing internship is that you should have finished MBBS or you could have done, uh, you could have, you can be a foreign medical graduate. Okay. Guys, look at this. Prior to internship, there is something called as provisional registration. This is a provisional, provisional registration with the state medical council. So just look at that. Okay. Guys, now let us um, get to the most important part. Okay. So here you can see the time distribution for internship. For two months, you will be posted in community medicine, guys. You will be actually posted in uh, CHC, RHC, is it? Interesting. So, you will be going to community health center, rural health center, etc. Interestingly, two months is quite huge. Look at general medicine. That is just 1.5 months. Okay. Pediatrics, one month. General surgery is also 1.5 months. So, I am seeing community medicine to be taking chunk of it. Obstetrics, gynecology, 1.5 months. Uh, everything else is like one week, two week. But look at this one. This is very important. Okay. In the casualty, in the emergency medicine, you will be there for two weeks. This should be a very good learning for you if you are in a hospital which gets a lot of trauma. So that should be a learning experience, guys. Look at this. Um, everything else is just one week, two weeks. So we are not going to the specifics. So in uh, two super specialities, one week each you'll have to spend. And they're asking you to also learn Indian system of medicine. Ayurveda, Yunani, Ayush, uh, what is that? All that that comes under Ayush, right? So you can choose, may choose any elective. One elective you can choose. So one week of exposure to Indian system of medicine. Here are the options guys for you. Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, etc. I know you people are very eager to know the rules. See rules are they will give you maximum 15 days of leave with prior permission during the entire period. Okay. I know you are also asking about stipend. Look at what NMC says. The stipend shall be paid, okay, as fixed by appropriate fee fixation authority. Who is your fee fixation authority, guys? Go check with them, okay. One thing you understand, guys, here, if the internship you do not uh, attend fully or you are taking too much of leave, then they will extend it, okay. And in this extension period, they will not pay you stipend. The thing is, earlier there was NET PG, right. So, for that, there was a rule that you should have finished your internship on certain date, right. You should have finished your internal internship by a certain date. Only then you would be eligible for NEET PG. But now with next and so many exams that have been added to next, again check. Okay, you have to complete your internship within given period of time so that you'll be eligible for mo any uh, of these exams. I know another question you will have is any more exams to give in life. So basically, guys, you'll have to maintain this logbook, okay? And you, they will write here uh, when you observe this condition, who assisted you, did, did have you performed it under supervision, are you able to do it independently, etc. So you will have to get this signed by people. So just look at all these skills that you need to know. So they can assess you basically on your practical knowledge. It is possible, okay? Okay, so they maintain this logbook year along. Then what happens? 
internship assessment and feedback form with the name of you student intern id etc how many leaves you have taken from when to when you did your internship and they will rate you knowledge how much you have patient care how much you have procedure skills okay so you can get a zero is it there is something like a gap here and here you can see that these start with a gap interesting okay so you will be assessed guys and then your strengths and areas of improvement will be written looks like and then your faculty will have to sign this okay guys so you are got a fair idea of what happens in internship isn't it now just look at look at the skills that you need to learn okay guys so whatever is written as i here you should be able to independently perform whatever is written as d you will have to be able to demonstrate or you can ignore it's more like an observation that you should have done but remember independently you should be able to perform some things and also demonstrate some things okay so those are the things you have to focus on mostly here in this video we'll focus on i okay so you should be able to do vein puncture you should be able to do intramuscular injection intradermal in injection subcutaneous injection and uh, all the types of injection right something is missing here oh iv injection all the four types of injection yes all the four types of injection you should be able to give you should be able to um, I uh, start an IV you should be able to calculate drip rate you should be able to give oxygen therapy nebulization aerosol therapy peripheral blood smear in, uh, interpretation this you have already done in pathology and uh, 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 in physiology also you have done that isn't it now let's move to general surgery and orthopedics guys in uh, surgery you should be able to do basic suturing have you ever put sutures guys wound care you should do bandaging you should be able to do you should be able to do uh, incision and drainage of a superficial abscess you should be able to manage trauma early management of trauma you should be able to do coming to orthopedics uh, basic splints slings you should be able to put application right and compression bandage guys okay now let's move on to obgyn okay obgyn you should be able to do obstetric examination episiotomy you should be able to do guys wow i have not touched the patient okay as of now what and all i have done you know being uh, in final year so far we have done um, i have given im injection i have inject i have put a nasogastric tube into a newborn i also i have done um, what else one more thing i have done i am not able to recollect one more procedure i have done anyways um, now coming to <coughs> obstetrics and gynecology what did we see obstetric examination episiotomy normal labor and delivery including partogram you should know how to uh, chart the partogram guys so hope you know what partogram is where it is showing the uterine contractions the cervix dilatation etc so you will be able to track the progress of the labor okay then coming to gynecology guys gynecology what and all you should be able to do per vaginal examination you should be able to do and per speculum also is it i have seen people do this okay but not done pap smear you should be able to collect and interpret okay then coming to uh, intra uterine contraceptive device you should be able to insert and remove that's nice okay then coming to let's move on to pediatrics what say people how's it going guys let's look at uh, pediatrics so basically pediatrics uh, you should be able to there's only one thing they want you to do setting up pediatric iv infusion and calculating with, with drip rate when they are saying you should do setting up pediatric iv infusion are they saying we have to set up the line we have to poke the patient that would be difficult right for a child and that too it's not cooperative whoops okay now let us go to forensic medicine guys forensic medicine is the next one here um, only one i i am seeing documentation and certification of trauma i don't know why they don't want you to get into medico legal problems yeah good so you have to only document and certify trauma okay guys now let's go to ent oto rhino laryngology when it comes to ent they want you to do otoscopy but they said we'll injure this patient and that's why they never let us put an otoscope anyways now coming to ophthalmology only three things okay what is it in otorhino laryngology ent only otoscopy you will do what about ophthalmology visual acuity testing you should do okay that we have done yeah you, okay eye irrigation okay sounds okay installation of eye medication okay ocular bandaging so definitely you just are putting some eye drops in people and putting some bandage that's it and checking their visual acuity okay that doesn't seem so hard now coming to dermatology the only thing they want you to do is uh, gram stained smear interpretation so it's not only interpretation guys we have to 
smear and stain and interpret what else will you find out in this basically you'll find out whether it's gram positive or gram negative and you'll find out if it's a bacilli or a cause stain the standard thing that we have done in microbiology already but what is this koh why koh examination is just a demonstration according to me this should have been an a, a, a procedure that we should independently do because considering the so many cases in of tinea why we should be doing this i feel okay anyways uh, let's move on guys pathology and blood bank is the next one see in pathology and blood bank you should be able to peripheral blood smear preparation staining interpretation urine microscopy routine examination manual blood sugar estimation manual this is not using that uh, automatic one guys manual blood sugar estimation how do you do blood sugar estimation manual was benedict's reaction for uh, glucose i forgot you remember this glucose reducing sugar benedict test but i have a feeling will they want us to do all this or directly you have so many meters nowadays why would we sit and do this yeah i think manual means they are seeing you use the machine only what do you think people okay let's uh, move on here um, csf examination you should do guys nice you have to only examine it you don't have to do any lumbar puncture blood grouping you have to do blood grouping this you have already done so many times in life you have done for pathology exam remember actually i go goofed up blood grouping so what you should do is you should uh, uh, ensure that there is proper agglutination put lot of blood and uh, agglutinate it okay <clears throat> it should be a proper agglutination it should not be a maybe kind of a thing you will get proper results just do it properly saline so cross match method this is i think for blood isn't it you will uh, suspend the rbcs in hypotonic buffered saline solution something is there like that and the recipients and you'll allow the antigen antibody reaction etc okay that is saline cross match method now let's move on to microbiology what say people shall we move to microbiology is it becoming too much guys let's see how much more is there wait microbiology pharmacology anatomy physiology oh anatomy physiology also are there biochemistry biomedical waste okay quickly let's look off it's like we are going in the reverse order till first year right now we have reached second year subjects microbiology gram staining koh see this is what i was telling of course you should do koh Okay, zn staining we have already done. Wet mount examination of stool. You have to do stool. Wow, wet mount examination of stool. You look for ova and cysts. So only ova and cysts will be there, is it? Okay, or small worms? Can you see? Okay, then uh, what is this? Identification of blood parasites on. Um, wait, let me zoom a little more. Identification of blood parasites on peripheral blood smear. Yeah, you should identify in the blood. They are looking for parasites. Okay, do you know the blood parasites? suddenly to my mind what is flashing is plasmodium you know because malaria they will try to identify the blood right uh, blood parasite okay pharmacology guys um, you are recognizing an adverse drug reaction you are not going to write any prescription and all remember okay then uh, what else applied anatomy identify structures on x ray ultrasound okay and they didn't put an i or a d or something here anyways now let's go to physiology physiology any i is there here there's an i here what is this interpret blood parameters like rbc count lactate glucose etc okay fine last two things guys look at this biochemistry what and all they are expecting you to do nothing is i they want you to demonstrate but how to estimate all sugar uh, i mean glucose cholesterol sgot sgpt they want you to only demonstrate there's no i there then coming to biomedical management uh, waste management you should only observe you should observe the segregation and disposal okay guys like we told you each of these uh, subjects they have given lot of details guys so you can uh, look at each of these subjects or a separate video we'll make on each of these okay now that you have looked at what you need to do 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 now you look at what you should not do okay look at this you should not practice independently and all okay you cannot issue any medical certificate you cannot perform medico legal procedures like autopsy or anything and you should not do any independent surgical or interventional procedures you should not do you should not hold any teaching position in the college you can teach but you cannot hold a teaching position okay then um, you should not indulge in any form of medical practice clinical or otherwise outside the purview of the requirement okay then what else do any other acts which is forbidden okay so hope you got a fair idea of what happens in internship guys 
guys i'm sure you are worrying about night duty etc see uh, in this document what it says is there will be some postings in the afternoon etc but as such night duty is not mentioned however night duty could be a part of your internship so do go through this document and the contact national medical commission guys uh, if you have any concerns okay that's it for now bye bye